Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here. And as you may or may not have heard, a new iPhone went on sale today. It's the new second generation iPhone SE. It costs $399. So in 2020, a brand new iPhone for $399. Now, originally I wasn't gonna talk about this until I had it in hand, but hey, quarantine content, right? Why not talk tech for a little bit? And there are just so many interesting conversations to be had because of this phone at this price. Fun fact, I already did talk about it in depth on the Waveform podcast, so if you want the long-form discussion version of this, it's the link below, you can listen to it anywhere. But uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. So first of all, Apple's having themselves a little hit year with minor refreshes so far in 2020, right? We had the MacBook Air, which is basically a new keyboard and internal spec bump, same design, and now it's everyone's favorite laptop. And we got the new iPad Pro, which is basically the same iPad Pro, with a LiDAR camera and an ultra wide and a new GPU core, bam, that's just extending their lead as the best tablet. And so now we have the new iPhone SE. So just so we're all on the same page, what is this iPhone SE? Well, if you picture the body of an iPhone 8, literally, like iPhone 8 cases will work with this new SE. So imagine an iPhone 8, touch ID, fingerprint reader, and bezels, the whole thing, the 4.7 inch Retina HD LCD display on the front, IP67, wireless charging, aluminum rails, the whole thing. You've seen an iPhone 8, but then on the inside, it has new internals, so it's spec bump again, so you got the new A13 Bionic, which is the same chip in the $1,000 iPhone 11 Pro, and three gigs of RAM. And some other little things, if you're paying attention, they moved the Apple logo down to the middle of the back of the phone now to match all the newer iPhones, so that's how you'll be able to tell what's an SE and what's an iPhone 8. And they're dropping it in three colors, it is red, black, or white. And all three colorways will have the black front bezels. Even the white one. So the white iPhone 8 had white bezels. The white iPhone SE has black bezels. So that's nice. But really it's a pretty simple formula. Some people have called this a parts bin phone just because Apple's recycling some things they have. You know, take the A13 over here, take the iPhone 8 body. They've done this with the iPad in the past, but hey, they slapped the iconic, much loved SE name on it now it's everywhere. Well, actually, it's the price that's making it a crowd favorite. That's why it's everywhere, but the SE name was smart too. So I have a couple thoughts on what make this so crazy and so interesting, and I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are, but number one, will this be the best camera in a budget phone? And I think it's very possible, at least top two. Like right now, if you've watched any other smartphone videos of mine, you know the obvious recommendation for a budget phone with a great camera has been Pixel 3a by a mile, because there really isn't any competition in this price range for a great camera. This new iPhone SE coming along will have basically the same hardware as the iPhone 8's camera, a single 12 megapixel shooter back there, plus the benefit of new image processing from the iPhone 11, thanks to the A13 Bionic. So I suspect it's, it's reasonable to assume this camera will be at least as good as the iPhone 8, if not a little bit better, thanks to software. And I think that puts it right up there against Pixel 3a. It might not beat Pixel 4a when that comes out as far as camera quality, but video quality? I'm gonna say this one's a safe bet for best video quality in a budget phone. Then number two, Apple joining the spec for low budget race makes it really tough for a lot of the Android manufacturers that have been absolutely feasting down there. See, for the longest time, there has never been an option to buy an iPhone, a new iPhone, at that low of a price. We've seen, you know, every year, new iPhone comes out, it's eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars, even up from that. And so they'll maybe bump down the price of older iPhones down to 600, maybe $500, but as soon as you want it to go lower than that, there was no new iPhone, and so that's where OnePlus and Xiaomi and Samsung would all be waiting for you. But now, now there's a new iPhone with an A13 Bionic for $399. And that's an easy choice for a lot of people. That's, that's gonna sweep up the rest of the sales that they were missing underneath the price of the lowest iPhone they had before. So that is scary if you're one of those Android manufacturers that's been basically thriving at that lower price because of the lower price. Like it just became a really easy choice for a lot of people. I'm, I'm super curious actually to see the day one, week one sales for this iPhone SE. Then number three, is this more likely to be the best budget phone of the year or the best compact phone of the year? We actually talked about this exact question on the Waveform podcast, and the answer we sort of landed on was probably best compact phone, 4.7 inch display, 
in the iPhone 8 body size is compact by today's standards. It's not the uh, it's not the good old precious truly SE days that we I definitely miss. Um, but we're really not expecting too many other flagship quality phones at a smaller size. So maybe it's a lock already for compact phone of the year. But I think we are likely to see more options to come out and compete at this price. So we already know Pixel 4a is probably coming up soon. Samsung's always dropping stuff at this price point. We always see all the other competitors very active from 300 to 600 bucks. So we're expecting more competition there. But yeah, as far as small phones, it's really easy to talk about how this is not a new design. Obviously Touch ID is old and big bezels on the front are old. Um, but I'll get back to that in a second. That's not exactly what people are paying attention to at a $399 price. But anyway, my bottom line right now, you know, we've been exchanging thoughts about this on Twitter, but I think this is Apple's best deal ever, which maybe isn't the highest bar ever from a company that's also selling wheels to their computer for $700. So, you know, it's a great deal from Apple, but it is also one of the best deals in all of tech. But you really have to think about what most people want, what 95% of people want. I think we kind of sometimes catch ourselves in this tech bubble where we're always looking at the bleeding edge, high tech stuff, but really it's a small percentage of us, maybe maybe 5% of us that care about you know, the design and, and being bezel-less and having a hole punch versus a notch camera, refresh rates, all the sort of stuff, it's a small percentage. So on the face of it, this looks like a phone with pretty much no downsides at this price for like 90% of people. Go, go ask your, your mom or dad or your grandparents or your aunt or uncle if they care about the screen to body ratio or the spec sheet of your phone. The answer is probably no. And if you told them they could get a brand new iPhone for 400 bucks and it has the new A13 Bionic and it's a pretty great camera, and you can get it in red, black, or white, which is kind of what I'm into, seems like a no brainer. I mean, we still should reserve judgment for the full review when we actually get to use this thing, but I'm thinking, okay, what do people care about a lot in a new phone? Uh, screen, and you know, this happens to be a 4.7 inch screen, but it's the same pixel density, same color accuracy as the iPhone 11, so that's fine. Um, they care about camera, and this is an iPhone camera. This is ideally iPhone 8 quality or better. Seems pretty good. They care about battery life, and honestly, an A13 Bionic in a screen this small, probably gonna do fine with battery. And then price, and this is a $399 phone. And it's an iPhone, so it's familiar. People know Touch ID, people know iOS, and something that's underrated with Apple stuff. We don't talk about this that much, but software updates. The software update support for this $399 phone, because it's an iPhone and it'll get iOS updates for probably four to five years, is probably the best for any $399 phone. So there you have it. A lot of interesting stuff coming from this iPhone SE announcement. You know, usually when we're talking about new tech, we're talking about the highest end, the bleeding edge of stuff, and that's what I like to focus on. But I guess the benefit of the world we live in is now that all this stuff is getting so good, you can bring down almost the bleeding edge tech way down in price and get stuff like a $399 iPhone that undercuts every single phone OnePlus has come out with for the past two years. It's a crazy time to be alive. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching this quick first impression and uh, catch you guys very soon in the next one. Peace.